Happy Monday, everybody. My name is Brandon Rosa, and welcome to episode 98 of the Xbox and 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. Every Monday, this podcast covers new game releases, the previous week's gaming news, and we all learn an Xbox-related fun fact together. This show is on YouTube and podcast services around the world, so please subscribe on your favorite and leave a review. Xboxin10.com, no numbers, is your quick source for links to all of our podcast destinations and social media profiles, which you can follow at Xboxin10. To start, let's talk game releases. The big game out last week was Lost Words Beyond the Page, and the games coming out this week include Night Squad 2, Rain on Your Parade, Super Meat Boy Forever, MLB The Show 21, Tribal Pass, and Borderlands 3 Director's Cut. A number of new games were announced coming to Xbox Game Pass, and they include the following. Available now as of April 8th, you can play Grand Theft Auto V on cloud and console, Zombie RB4 Dead War on cloud, console, and PC, Disneyland Adventures on cloud, Rush a Disney Pixar Adventure on cloud. On April 12th, you can play NHL 21 on console via EA Play. On April 15th, you can play Rain on Your Parade on cloud, console, and PC, and Pathway on PC. On April 20th, coming to Xbox Game Pass is the wild MLB The Show 21, available on cloud and console. In addition to these games coming, leaving Game Pass on April 15th is Deliver Us to the Moon, Gatto Roboto, and Wargroove. Now onto last week's biggest news stories, and on a slow news week, we have five to cover. Number one, Kojima Productions reportedly in talks with Xbox to publish next project. Nicholas Downey at Windows Central writes, The rumor mill is always turning, with talk of a new Hideo Kojima project now circulating and involvement from Microsoft. Following up on the 2019 release of PlayStation launch exclusive Death Stranding, speculation on Kojima Productions' new project has ignited from helming a Silent Hill reimagining to a full Metal Gear Solid remake, but with a new report it appears that things could possibly get crazier. According to a new report from VentureBeat via GamesBeat editor Jeff Grubb, Kojima is currently in talks with Microsoft and its Xbox Game Studios publishing arm for its next game. The report states that this deal has not yet been closed, but rather an ongoing conversation between the two firms. This reportedly supplements Microsoft's initiative to leverage more Japanese developer talent across the Xbox ecosystem. This comes as Microsoft continues to expand its presence overseas, including Japanese content on Xbox systems and Xbox Game Pass. Kojima's long-standing relationship with Sony comes from new beginnings at Konami, including its biggest deal to date with PlayStation for Death Stranding. That led to PlayStation's first-party studio Guerrilla Games providing not only essentially development help on the project, but also granted Kojima access to the studio's in-house Decima game engine. But at the same time, this comes Hideo Kojima now heading an independent studio with an established reputation and going against expectations. Who knows, maybe those cryptic shelves behind Xbox head Phil Spencer weren't there for nothing. Wild to speculate that Xbox could throw another haymaker at PlayStation by securing Hideo Kojima's next game. Kojima is obviously one of the biggest names in gaming, and while my only experience with him is with Death Stranding, I did love how insane that game was. I loved it for being so crazy and being for one of a kind game, and that's the kind of experiences we could use on Xbox, and especially part of Xbox Game Pass. Number 2. Microsoft adds touch controls to more than 50 Xbox Game Pass Cloud games. Jordan Allman at IGN writes, Microsoft has added touch controls to more than 50 cloud-based games on Xbox Game Pass. The news arrived as Microsoft revealed a slate of games coming to the platform in April in a blog on the Xbox website. Xbox Touch Controls debuted in September 2020 alongside the launch of Minecraft Dungeons, but Microsoft is now extending the control scheme to the 50-plus cloud-compatible games on Xbox Game Pass. This means that Android device owners can use the Xbox Game Pass app to play Xbox Cloud Gaming titles without a controller connected to their phone. The games that will benefit from touch controls include Slay the Spire, Sea of Thieves, Spiritfarer, Gears 5, Tell Me Why, Desperados 3, Dead Cells, Donut County, Dragon Quest XI, Echoes of an Elusive Age, and more. This is really cool to give many people more access and ways to play different games on Xbox Cloud Gaming. I for one might get a lot more use out of this since I'm in the process of moving, and my phone might be my primary Xbox device for the weeks to come. Number 3. Xbox, Nintendo, Take-Two, and more are part of E3 2021's digital lineup. Stephanie Nunali at VG247 writes, E3 2021 returns this year as a digital-only event will feature some big names attached. The online-only E3 2021 will be backed by Capcom, Konami, Microsoft, Nintendo, Take-Two, and Ubisoft. Warner and Koch Media will also be part of the show. As noted by GamesIndustry.biz, Activision Blizzard, Bandai Namco, EA, Sega, Sony, and Square Enix will not make appearances. E3 2021 will be held June 12th to the 15th, so there may be more heavy hitters joined between now and that time. 
Quote, for more than two decades, E3 has been the premier venue to showcase the best that the video game industry has to offer, while uniting the world through games, end quote, said Staley Pierre Lewis, president and CEO of the ESA, in the press release. Quote, we are evolving this year's E3 into a more inclusive event, but will still look to excite the fans with major reveals and insider opportunities that make the event the indispensable center stage for video games, end quote. During the online show, the developers and hardware makers will be showcasing their latest news and games directly. The SAA will be working with media partners globally to help amplify and make this content available to everyone for free. E3 is one of my Super Bowls every year. In addition to football, I love the center stage that E3 is for games, media, and all the news and announcements that come from all the press conferences. I usually take off every year and love to see all the exciting announcements. Xbox for One has been a huge part with these showcases that they've had at the last two E3s, minus the 2020 miss with COVID-19. Can't wait to see them come back in a big way this year, and we won't have to wait that much longer. Number 4. WWE 2K22 announced during WrestleMania 37 with gameplay teaser. Adam Bankhurst at IGN writes, During WrestleMania 37, WWE 2K22 was revealed alongside a first look at the gameplay featuring Rey Mysterio and Cesaro. The short clip which you can see features gameplay captured from a work in progress build but showcases the new character models and actions fans can expect from the game when it arrives later this year. WWE 2K22 will be 2K's first WWE simulation wrestling game since the poorly received WWE 2K20. I know there's millions of wrestling fans out there, I for one am just not one of them. I did enjoy the old school wrestling games though on the Nintendo 64, and it seems like big fans of wrestling games wish they would go back to that style of gameplay. Maybe if they did go back, I would give it another shot. And number 5, new Resident Evil showcase event set for April 15th. Ryan Gilliam at Polygon writes, Capcom is planning its second Resident Evil news dump of the year, including another trailer for Resident Evil Village, the next mainline Resident Evil game. The April 15th livestream will also feature a few other surprises as well, according to Thursday's teaser trailer. The April Resident Evil showcase will air at 6pm Eastern, 3pm Pacific on Capcom's YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook channels. After the recent success of the Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 remakes, it's possible we could see another restoration project for Resident Evil 4 or Resident Evil Code Veronica the latter being the direct follow-up to the second and third games. I don't want to get too excited, but seeing a remake of Resident Evil Code Veronica or 4 would be the biggest news for me. Resident Evil is one of my favorite franchises of all time, so I can't wait for Village, but I also love going back and playing the old games. As always, we end our show with a fun fact about Xbox. While this one isn't fun, it does highlight the importance of why a Kojima game from Xbox exclusive could be huge as Xbox has never gained the traction in Japan that it's wanted. Credit to Jason Faulkner at GamerRevolution.com It's no secret that Xbox has never been able to gain much market penetration in Japan. Looking at the sales numbers though, just shows how much Microsoft is struggling. The Xbox One has sold a little over 100,000 units in Japan. In contrast, almost 60,000 Switch consoles were bought from January 27th to February 2nd in 2020, with over 11 million total units sold since the platform debuted in early 2017. According to VG Charts, the Xbox One has sold less than 10% than the Xbox 360 in Japan. The total units purchased from Microsoft's previous console were already tepid at 1.6 million. Crazy to get in that contrast with how much the Switch could do in such a short time, and how little the Xbox did in its entire generation with the Xbox One. Please Kojima, come to Xbox, make a great exclusive game, and help gain some more market share in the country. Thank you all for listening to the Xbox and 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. If you like the show, please subscribe to your favorite podcast service, share it with your friends, leave a review, and follow on all social media at Xbox and 10. This past week, I haven't had any time to play any games, so I don't have any new updates there. And apologies if the show sounded a little different, as I've completely emptied my basement while I record, so there's probably further echoing than there's ever been before. My name is Brandon Rose. You can follow me on Xbox at Brosa93. Hope you all have a great week. Stay safe and keep on gaming.